we're unboxing the MTS 4000. Dennis, who so tell us real quick like who would who would want the who would want what is the MTS 4000 who would want it? The MTS 4000 is an MPIC analyzer with a variety of electrical and optical inputs. It's mainly for people that do diagnostics and troubleshooting on signals when they have monitors, whether it be the Sentry or the MTM, and they're monitoring 24 by 7, they run into a problem. They need something that can go very deep, okay. and that's when they would call up an analyzer like this, connect up to it, and maybe they need to look at it for a few minutes. Maybe they might leave it on the line for 24 hours to monitor something. Okay. So this, um, use like people if people want to generate a signal on ASI. Yep. Okay. Yeah. What other ability to create ASI? Uh, you can manipulate or multiplex a stream. You can even acquire a stream over ASI. Oh. Change it. And then you can manipulate it and send it out, as well as you can do the same for IP. Okay. So here's our manuals, and then this this is the software uh, protection key that plugs into any of the USB ports on the side or the front. So it's required to activate the software. And then what are what are these? These are the jumper cables. These are critical because any of the RF and Giggy ports that are plugged in for the outside customer uh, signal interface. We will make measurements. Take a little video too. So, all right. So basically, it's going from whatever option card that the customer might get to um, to uh, to the actual unit. To the ASI card, yes. Yeah. And anybody that orders an RF or IP card, you have to order the ASI card as well. Okay. Two work together in conjunction. Cool. Okay. So pulling right. out the MTS one thousand. Okay, it's not light. It's not light. I just want to say that again. Oops. It's a, it's a giant black box. Oh, okay. So this has several options. Hardware cards. The maximum have already been installed. Okay. So somebody ordered the 10 gig card. That's an option. The okay. 5 comes with the platform. So these all well, of course come with it. Yes, true. Okay. So the 10 gig was an option that was added. Then two other cards were added. One is an 8 VSB, one is a QAM B for cable and terrestrial. Okay. And those require the ASI card. So what we're going to do is jumper the first card down to ASI 1, the second card to ASI 2. That'll leave us inputs on 3 and 4, or we can generate on 3 or 4. Or okay. for a demo, we can generate out of four into three. Now you already have you already have the, these are the units you already have set up, right? Yes, I do. So this is just to kind of get an idea of like what it looks like when you first get it. Yep. So and then on the back, I also see a a series of keys. These are the keys that have been uh, provided for the demo unit, and they will go with the dongle when plugged in on the side. So we have the base unit mm -hmm. and the key uh, USB when plugged in, along with this string here typed in will give us a variety of software options and then normally what we would do is take the key <coughs> plug it in one of these guys doesn't really matter which one Sweet. And so that'll allow us to oh and then the jumper, jumper cables. cables so this is very critical so we will take the first one which is above here there's an input and an output and it looks like which one's the output this is output so we'll take the output from the first card and feed it to the input, the first one, one, two, three, four. We'll take the second card, its output, and feed it to number two. Now, if we had a live signal, we would connect maybe to here, and then the terrestrial Yagi on the roof to here. And of course, we have our IP Yagi, I mean, yes. Yagi card. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, how's the screen put down? Uh, two buttons on the side. So, raise this button and this button on the side and then it drops down. Sweet. There's two feet on the bottom if we wanted to have it at an angle. So we can pop those up. So we can tilt it at an angle. I have mine set up as an angle. For shipping okay. we want to recess those. And then now we have the keyboard, mouse trackpad, buttons, and uh, super XGA display. These 
start off at around ninety nine hundred dollars. Yep. And if they were just order just the base unit, they wouldn't get these cards back here. Correct. The base unit would come with the base computer, the dongle, and then the two measurement cards you would get. Capabilities would be the Ethernet number one and number two. Those okay. would be available as the So base. they'd be able to look at it. They are just to buy this as it is with an ASI card. They'd be able to look at a transport stream. Yes. Okay. You but to generate it, they need to order an option gen and... Uh, no. Yeah. If, yeah. If, you, if you order this without any options at all, you'll get the measurement down here for generate and receive of okay. the, uh, the IP. If you order the ASI option, you can then generate and analyze off of ASI. Mm. If you order the software only, you have to order the generate option. And what's the IPTV option? IPTV is a, another card, which is right here. You can only have two of the four option cards plugged in. So if you order the IPTV card, this would be in place of either the QAM or the APSB, and it allows you to look at a CAT5 or an optical signal through SFP, and it'll look at a full line rate, whereas the network interface card cannot handle a full 1,000 megabits. Ah. So about 600 megabits, it stops. So they won't, uh, if they don't need full line rate, they could just buy it with... Absolutely. Okay. So this will look at a full line rate. It'll also, in parallel, look at all transport streams at once, whereas the NIC, you have to choose one of them. Okay. And then the, the best thing uh, you get here that you don't get on the NIC is a high-resolution histogram of the jitter between any two packets. Okay. So that's very nice to see. If is you my don't camera need to see pointed that, down at them? Yep. Okay. So if you need a histogram, you can get it on here. Otherwise, yes, the network interface card, which comes standard, will provide a lot of measurements. Wow, okay. So that's good to know because I actually had that question on here today. So I'll set this one down. What they have to do is if they want to add a card later on, they just take off this. Yep, the four, uh, two screws, two, 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 so eight screws on the back. An extra fan here for keeping it cool, powered by one of the DC connectors here. So take that off, set it aside. Then there's a bridge to hold tight there. Oops. This bridge here has already been removed yesterday, okay. and so this bridge applies pressure to the two optional cards during uh, trans transition. Okay, so if, if it gets jarred around a little bit, it'll hold it in place. Right, this okay. will apply pressure here to keep it from moving. So we take that off if we want to make any hardware changes. And then the first card has its uh, communication jumper connected from here down to the motherboard. The second one I haven't applied yet, so when I plug in my second card, I'll plug it in here. Use the comm jumper to communicate to that. Got it. And then just like on the first case we had, we have the output of this case, the IPTV card, going into the ASI number one. Yeah. Similar to the one you had. Yeah, but that's but it's basically like swapping a card on a computer if you want to add any functionality. So it's almost identical to swapping a card on okay. a computer. Anything special we should note about the MTS four thousand over the four thirty or um, anything? Yes. The okay. there's a few new things. One of the most important is on the 430, you were able to look at any one of the electrical inputs, satellite, cable, terrestrial, ASI, but you had to choose one. You could never look at two of them in real time, in parallel. Mm -hmm. Whereas now with the 430, you can look at many different ports in parallel. Specifically, if we had a satellite card plugged in mm -hmm. and a terrestrial card plugged in, as we have in the unit behind us here, we could be connected up to the satellite feed, which is for ingest, and then we could look at the terrestrial output feed. It should have the same signal, but maybe the bandwidth is different or the bug or logo is different. And with that, you could be looking at the same signal, two different locations to help pinpoint where the problem is. Okay. When you find a problem on TV, you don't know, was it from transmission? Was it from the studio? Was it from the, the transmitter? Was it from the ingest? Was it from the original provider, maybe ABC or NBC? So all you know is you see it on a screen. This will help you to pinpoint whether it was the studio, the satellite, or the transmission. Oh, okay. That's important to know. So that's one thing. The other thing is on the MTS430, it had a powerful computer uh, processor in it, but not powerful enough to handle all types of the uh, high-definition H.264 processing. So since some of the signals are coming in, have MPEG-2 and MPEG-4 or MPEG-4, we wanted a more powerful processor that we could look at and decode the entire video audio elementary streams in parallel 
So the new Intel i7 processor allows us to look at multiple transport, decode multiple videos in parallel to make live uh, encoding measurements. Okay. So that's a, that's a major difference.